Pushy flame. Cones on. Turning up the oxygen. This is the 3D printed star part. Uh, three large ones stacked together. We're going to preheat the crucible until it's glowy glowy. There were six other things tapped at this point, but it has cooled down since those were all cleaned and scrubbed from the investment bucket, and now they're all sitting in the pickle. But this is the last one of the day. We've got 100 grams of fine silver with a little bit of copper to alloy into sterling. So we're just waiting for the base of that crucible to get nice and hot. And by nice and hot, I mean glowy, glowy. If you're looking through this through like level five welding shades, it's just gonna look like there's light. You won't see any color. But if you got the shades off when I pull the torch away, it's gonna be somewhere between a cherry red and like a pumpkin orange, like a so. Drop two coins in, get that charge started. The orifice on this base for the large flask number 24 is so big that we know we have good alignment, so we're going to scoot that forward now that we have the flame showing. And in fact, I'll just show you what that looks like. You want to make sure that there's a nice flame coming out the front so you know that the muzzle or the mouth of the crucible is not clogged so metal can flow from the crucible straight to your flask when that elbow breaks and that fulcrum throws all your metal, three Gs of force, straight into the back of your flask. And this is always a reminder, step one is to wind the center fuse. You can do every other step in any other order, but if you do not wind first, I promise you will regret casting because no one wants to wind this armature three times around while everything is, I don't know, 1500 degrees. We've done it. It's not fun. Nobody wants to do it again. So now we're going to add the rest of our charge. Go little coin, go! Oh, so finicky. One more time. There we go. Turning the acetylene up to get a slightly dirtier flame. When we get to the end of our melting charge, it's always good to have a dirty flame to keep your metal clean. Remember, the carbon that burns off acts as an electron donor as it goes from acetylene to CO2. And that keeps your metal nice and shiny, which saves you a lot of scrubbing and pickling, etc., etc. want to make sure that there aren't any pieces of copper that haven't fully mixed. So as your metal is starting to melt fully, it's good to check in the corners and see if there's any solid spots because the melting point between fine silver and copper is different and you need the fine silver to melt and have the copper which behaves like little solid ice cubes in your alloy. You want to make sure those get mixed in with your molten silver.
good. Five to 